because we know people who should be successful, but what? They're not successful. Why? So that's his why buy. But what is he afraid of? My personal style of education, but still entertain them, bring them along with stories, right? You can't wait to tell your colleague. You can't wait to go to work and tell somebody. And you're like, oh my God, I can't wait. So what happened? If you haven't seen my TV show, you should get cable. That's what we need to do. From doing a TV show to doing corporate events, I've been so lucky to connect with many passionate entrepreneurs worldwide. What I've learned from a business perspective, because this is the formula for success, no matter who you talk to, attitude will drive your behavior. Would you agree? and your behavior will drive your consequences every single time. All right, we got the concept. Okay, we got the concept. We got, we got the equipment, right? We got the brand, we guys got that. And then again, we got the content that we create. That's the easy part. This is the big one, the big C, which is the commitment. What should you do? That's right, all right. 10 Xers, do not fail me. True test, here it comes. There's skill, and then there's will. Listen to what I'm saying. There is skill, and then there is will. And here's the interesting thing. I know a lot of people who have a lot of skill, but have no what? Will, right? You ever look at somebody who's successful, and you say, why them, why not you? Yes, okay, that's me too. You have more control, but your costs are also gonna be what? Higher. Now, here's where some of the magic is starting to kick in. You can talk to any CEO in the B2B business, any CEO. You walk into his office and they only care about three things. People too. Yeah, he with the suit, put it up. There you go. I hope you can see this. I'll try to draw big. Let's pretend for a moment that I had seven territories. You remember I wrote that out? Yes or no? Boom. Territory two, territory three, all the way to territory number one. Seven. So now I've segmented my market. So content is going to start being created by machines. And I'm telling you right now that those people, you guys, the content creators that connect with people are the ones that are going to win. Some people think, well, it won't work for my industry. Really? It'll work for any industry. Trust me. The majority of the time when we're looking to fix something, repair something, or learn something, where do we go? YouTube. We don't even want to read anymore. We go to YouTube. Tell me if I'm wrong. Tell me if I'm wrong. When you're doing your thing, beautiful things begin to happen. It's like the law of attraction kicks in. You know what I mean? It's almost like you're in line with the universe. Everything works. And when you do your thing, everybody gets an automatic MBA, which stands for what? Mega bank account money. Are you with me? So we don't want to do a thing. We want to do a what? Beautiful. Put it all together for Victor Antonio. Here we go. All right, there we go. I'm not here to mess around. You ready to learn? Yes or no? That's how it works in today's market. Whether it's B2B or B2C, you see the similar pattern. Managers. How do you just, you know, in other words, say you've got to start doing these things, pushing them, but also encouraging them. Oh, look at this. This is where it gets, dude, this is, this is like so interactive with audience. Can you imagine this with your customers? Check this out. Now, what does all this have to do with selling? It has everything to do with selling. Welcome to another episode of Sales After Dark, because money never sleeps. Anyway, glad to have you on here. By the way, 
Uh, this is live, but if you're watching this on a replay, what you need to do is fast forward because I'm going to say hi to my friends. And then I'm going to jump into some content and then I'll do some Q&A at the end and then we're out of here. That's how it works. So uh, this is episode, can you believe, 96, getting close to 100. So for those of you who know that, that was the commitment. I'm going to do 100 episodes and we are getting there and we're going to do it before the end of the year. Can you believe it's December already? Isn't that wild that it's December already, man? So, uh, I don't know. Is it me? I'm just not, I'm not feeling the Christmas mood yet. I got my little turtle right here, my Christmas turtle, but I don't know, I'm just not feeling it yet. So, I don't know, it's just me. Maybe I'll get into the mood as we get closer to the 24th and the 25th. Maybe, who knows? But anyway, let me say hi to my friends here. My man, Daniel Benjamin says, mm, let's go, Daniel. I'm with you, man. We're going to get going here. My girl, West Coast, in the house, Mia Knox. Mia's been there from the beginning, man. Got you, Mia. Thank you very much. Daniel, what do you got to say again, man? It's all about willing to do whatever it takes, man. Hey, man, you got to do what it takes to get where you're going, man. So love that philosophy. Pete Primo, do your thing, man. There it is. If you don't know what do your thing means, Google Victor Antonio, do your thing, and then you'll know what it means. Anyway, it's like code. And then we have Vera. Cardick, good to have you back. Good morning. A suggestion, please. Interview Tom Hopkins and Donald Miller, please. By the way, I, I'm on Donald Miller's like uh, email list. I should interview them, right? That's actually a good suggestion. Tom Hopkins, I think, would also be a good suggestion. He's, he was one of like the original, like when he wrote The Art of Sale, is The Art of Selling, I think, and it was like 80-something. It was one of the first sales books I've ever read. And then Donald Miller, I just like his stuff. I, I, like his, I like his flow. I like his groove. So those are good suggestions, man. Thank you very much. I appreciate you. Vera Lisa Claudio says, your show Life or Debt is the, the bomb. By the way, so I have a TV show. That's right. I'm a reality TV star. So if you go online, if you type in Victor Antonio, Life or Debt, you'll find my show that was on Spike TV. Uh, it's a great show. I, It should have been picked up for multiple seasons. You know, uh, there was some politics going on and it didn't get picked up, but it's a great show. I'm the host. I'm the reality show host. Like, I am actually the host. And just be warned that the nice victory you see here is not the nice victory that shows up on set. I'm a little hard. And the, 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 by the way, the concept of the show, if you want to check it out, again, it's on, uh, I think, Amazon, Amazon, Hulu. No, I don't get a commission or a cut. Um, but uh, I spend a week with a family who's struggling financially. And I really put them through some stuff. Like, you got to see some, some of the episodes are just incredible. And then I come back in 90 days after I give them all the tools, advice, and resources to see how they're doing. And some of the results are just, you know, some are like, as you would expect, they turn it around, they made it happen. And some do things that would just blow your mind. So, and by the way, Verilisa, I got to tell you this, just a side note. I can't tell you how many couples, couples, you know, would send me emails thanking me because they use the show as a way for the husband and wife to sit and watch the show together. And that actually brought them together and had a, so they can have a conversation about their own personal finances. And they said that's why they really enjoyed the show because it allowed for a conversation between the couples. So check it out if you haven't checked it out. Uh, and again, I don't get anything so... Check it out. Joshua Brand, thank you for joining me, man. Love to have you here. Vera Lisa's back again. America needs this content now more than ever. Look, it needed it before the pandemic, but to your point, you are absolutely correct. It needs it even more now. So thank you for bringing it up, by the way. Thank you very much. All right. Good day, my man, TJ, man. Uh, Mass VA, hey, Mia, everybody else, peeps. Another day of celebration. That's what it is, man. TJ, you get a hello. Arvin, man, I haven't seen you in a while. Arvin, where you been? Good morning, Victor from Mumbai. It's the beginning of winter here, man. I four to go. Very exciting. Very, very exciting, man. It's winter here in Georgia. Uh, but I don't know. I mean, we got down to about 30, 35 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, so it's pretty cold, man. Uh, greetings, Victor. Uh, how are you? I'm doing good, Sean, man. I'm doing good, man. I'm hanging in there. It's been a long day. I did a... Uh, I, I was on, I don't know if you know who, uh, Sean, if you know who Gerhard Gerschwatner is. He's the guy that has Selling Power magazine. So I actually did a virtual uh, keynote slash workshop today for uh, the Sales 3.0 virtual conference. Uh, and it turned out really well, man. Good deal. Closing on 100, man. I hear you, brother. 
Arvin Garcia, my man. I like having you out here. Arvin, I agree with you about sharing prices to create structure. Join Fiverr. I need this topic. I appreciate your input. Uh, I, by the way, I love Fiverr. You know, it's uh, if you need some stuff like done, you know, without breaking the bank, Fiverr is a great resource. If you don't know what Fiverr is, go check them out. So uh, basically, you can go up there and find contract work. Um, by the way, you can offer your services or if you need something done for you, video editing, audio, graphics, website, whatever, you'll find it at Fiverr. So thank you for bringing that up, Arvin. That's a very, very good point, man. Uh, uh, yeah, so we're going to have the Zoom, Google Meet, or what? Uh, I don't know, man. I don't know, man, what we're going to do. I got to figure out something. It's getting close to the 100. I got to figure out something. Uh, hey, you, Victor. Sarah here. Sarah, thank you for joining us. Love having you here. My man, Brian Gator. It would not be complete. There he is from Las Vegas. And Matt Parker says, oh, yeah, this is going to be good. I think so, man. It's going to be an interesting topic. I thought it was a good one, man. Forever Fitness, Tony. Welcome back, man. I haven't seen you in a while, man. Couldn't have you, bro. Uh, we can now start Gator this year. That's right, man. One full year of, man, I know, of Corona, the vid, man. Oh, oh I got you, brother, man. It's, it's man, we're going to look back at this time and go, that was some interesting times we went through. You know, so hopefully everybody's staying safe. 96 Superb, good morning. Cabless. So want, man. Shy Suarez. I know you're from Chicago, man. You made that clear last time, man. So getting there, getting there. Uh, let me see. March. Time flew so fast. March, April. I think we did the first episode. I think it's May 11th, May 4th or something like that. I can't remember anymore. Uh, evening all. Mile, thank you for being here. Uh, let me see. We got a couple more. We got Herb Walsh in the house here. My man, OV. Thank you, man. Always good to have you here. Merdaza, man. What is happening, man? Thank you. All is good on this side. Vera Kartek, thank you, VA. Thank you, man. Uh, Ulysses Macedo, man. Hello, right back at you, man. Got a couple more. I'm going to jump into content here. Clear results fitted. Hi, Victor. Tim here from Chicago. Ooh, stay warm, brother. Stay warm. Good to see you again. I'm ready to learn, brother. Oh, man, I love that, man. I'll dig that. Here in Alpharetta, my man, Spencer Riley, man. Thank you, man, for being here. Daniel Maldonado Leiva. Great info, man. Thank you for being here. Andre, man, got a busy night tonight here, man. Good evening, Andre. Good. Thank you, Moises. I really got to get started, man. I really got, we got a lot of folks jumping in. Uh, Victor, man, thank you, man. Appreciate you. Uh, Alex says, Victor, you're my idol. That's a bit much, man. But thank you. I appreciate that, man. Uh, uh, okay, you're my biggest idol. I like the way you had the, had the adjective, biggest idol, man. I appreciate that, too. Thank you. Uh, what else is going on? Stay safe, stay selling, man. Nate, I love what you're saying, man. Joshua Brand, let's close this one out, man, so we can jump into content. Good to be here, my brother. We featured one of your lessons on the soft slash medium nose and how to handle that. Thanks, as always. Love the fact that people are using it, man. Uh, I get that a lot, actually. I have a, I had a friend actually send me something. He was in a Sprint training meeting, the company Sprint. And sure enough, they have one of my videos as one of their training resources. By the way, it was one of the videos off YouTube. So it was, you know, it was, it was all good and cool with me. But it was kind of cool when I find out people use my content. So thank you, and thank you for sharing that. You used it, man. I appreciate that. All right. I've been going around with this. You know that online I have this thing called Client Says. By the way, you should check out my Client Says on YouTube. Uh, I Client Says, and then, you know, here's it. Like, for example, Client Says, you know, your price is too high. Client Says, now's not a good time. And Andy Locke, I'm going to call Andy Locke out because I started doing the Client Says first, and Andy Locke started doing them. And he's getting more views than me. That's what bums me out. It was my idea, but he gets more views. Damn it. Maybe he's doing it better than me. I don't know. But anyway. All that said, I got a new client says, so I want to share that with you today. And by the way, Andy Locke, it's all love, man. It's all love in the world. So what I want to do is let's answer this question when the client says, you know, the client says, why should I choose you over your competitor, right? Great topic. And again, we'll get into the content right now. And then if you have any questions, we'll ask, ask them at the end and I'll go through them. Now, let's say, let's create the scenario. You've done your presentation. Now, this is B to B or B to C. Doesn't matter. You've done the presentation. Basically, you've explained your solution, like everything. You've walked them through everything, right? And you've answered every questions on features. You answered all the benefits, right? Here's how it benefits you. Here are the advantages. And here's probably how you're going to gain by using our product or service, right? So good stuff. So then the customer is going to say, well, you know, let's say you finished. It's almost like, are you done? Yeah, I'm done. And then the customer says, it could be one person, it could be a committee of people, but one person says, why should we choose you over your competition? Or why should we choose your company over your competitor? 
You know, in other words, they're telling you they actually met with other competitors. My question is, what do you say at this very moment? Put yourself in that position. Customer says, why should we choose you over your competitor? Why should we choose you over your competition? Again, letting you know they uh, met with other people. Come on, hit me up on the chat. This is what I want to get you to chat on. What would you say? What would you say? Go ahead. Come on, give it to me. Give it to me. What would you say? What would you say? Because it's an interesting one, right? It's like, I don't know. Listen, now remember, you've pretty much said everything. You've pretty much said everything. What could you layer in there to kind of really close that deal? Or maybe you can't close a deal. Maybe that's a question that says, I don't want your product. What do you think? Come on, chat me up. Let's chat me up. Pete says, let's discuss service backup. <laughs> Nate says, it comes with me. That's what makes it different. I love that, Nate. That's awesome, man. I have your best interest in mind. I'll put your needs first. That's me and Knox. That's what she says, right? I'll put your needs first. Uh, uh, always answer a question with a question. Mark Fonseca is chiming in. By the way, if you don't know who Mark Fonseca is, if you, if, you know when you're watching the videos and you see me with, in the intro and you see those nice, cool suits? That's Mark Fonseca. Uh, I like to say I have my own clothing designer, but really he helps anybody. So if you're looking for a great suit and you need somebody to fit you, give you the right look, great, Mark Fonseca's the man. Sorry, what else do you got? Why wouldn't you do business with me? <laughs> By the way, man, I got to put yours up there. Yeah, this is such a good one. Why the heck wouldn't you do business with me? I love that. It's just it's like, isn't it obvious why you should do business with me? It should have been obvious by now. Dude, dude that is so funny, man. That is hilarious. Uh, let me see. Shai, uh, we care holistically for your needs. So sympathetic. I, I actually felt that, man. I felt that. You know, I felt that. My man, Frank Visgatis, man. Uh, if you have... If you have to ask, then clearly I missed something. Great line, Frank. By the way, Frank is a great sales trainer. I read his book, uh, Customer Centric Selling. Check it out, Customer Centric Selling. I also interviewed Frank on the Sales Influence Podcast. Frank, the fact that you joined this live stream, man, thank you, brother. When, when a guy like that at that level joins this live stream, this is good. My, my evening has been made by Frank, man. Thank you very much. Uh, let's see what you got, Andre. Uh, now I think this would be... This will greatly benefit why our clients will choose our company over the competition. All right. What part has you holding back? What part has you holding back? Not bad. Not bad. I like that concept. Uh, we customize to your needs and put your interests in mind. Have your best interests in mind. Got it. Uh, let me see. Uh, what do you got here? Vincent says, I would basically just tell them what's not to choose. <laughs> Never defensively respond to their question. Never defensively, interesting phrase, man, interesting comment, never defensively respond to their question. I like that, man. You're, you're close there, Vincent, man. I think you're on to something, man. I uh, said, so because I'm the only one that was invited to present to this board. Okay, there were more than one person. So, okay. Uh, Mark Fonseca, man, thank you, man. Just uh, I, I show love because uh, I love your suits, man, and what you've done for my look, man. So, thank you. Uh, I'm backed by over a hundred years of industry experience. That's what Trish would say. I like that, Trish. You're going in hard, man. Bringing in that credibility and that long, you know, that track record. Uh, Got to have fun. If the customer's laughing and they're the customer's laughing, they're buying. You're absolutely right, man. Okay, a couple more, then we'll just jump into it. Competitor. Well, <laughs> there you go, Chad. Chad, dude, this is a beautiful night. So, Chad, check out Chad. I wrote a book on AI. Chad wrote a book on AI. Just look this guy up, man. You'll find them on LinkedIn, man. So if you're looking for some great content on not only sales, but artificial intelligence, that's the guy to also follow, man. So Chad, man, thank you for joining. Like, let me see. I got, I got Mark. I got Frank. I got Chad. I must be doing something right when these guys jump on, man. Thank you, man. Appreciate that. Uh, let me see what you got. Hey, Victor, why not? <laughs> that's it. Why not? And on the beef, the, uh, the Benjamin Franklin clothes. Love it. Uh, Fonseca's going with the takeaway, man. Fonseca's going with the takeaway. All right, so we don't keep this going out. Anything you are not sure, which I need to cover, uh, which raised your concern. In other words, you're asking, is there anything that, that's holding you back, a concern? Um, what did you like about your competitor? Nice one. I'm not a bad one, actually, man. I'm not a bad one. Okay, one or two more, then we'll jump into what I think you should say, and then we can have a debate. Uh, no trainer can match what I do or come close. Allow me to show you. Now, remember, you've already showed them, though, Tony. You've already given them all you got, man. You've, you've expended yourself. 
That's that's the trick part here is that you expended yourself. You gave you left it all on the presentation playing field, right? It's like whew, there it is, right? It's like the final presentation. Uh, let me see. I like Frank's counter. Uh, I do too. It opens up the question, what what did I miss? What is left, right, to address to make this compelling uh, or a no-brainer? I love it, Gerald. I, th- I think you're on to something as well. So, like I said, this is all, and, and I always say, it's all the different styles how you want to approach it. Why should we take your service when others, uh, when others giving for less cost? Of course, you are saying more value. You want to sell the value. Got it. All right. So, here's what we're going to do. Let me go through what I have for you, and then you tell me. Maybe I'm wrong. Maybe you don't even like my answer, but I think I'm on to something. And some of you hit it very closely. I mean, like really close, like, right? You were right there, right? So now here's the positive side. This is not a bad statement because the buyer has expressed interest, right? You know, because most people would just wrap this up. I said, thank you for your time. You know, <laughs> and just, if they didn't want to hear, they'd just say, thank you for your time. And they just leave. The fact that so the, the fact that they're even asking this question is a big positive. It's a big positive, right? Next. And then the second one is that buyer wants you to close them. That's what they're looking for. They're looking for you to close them. They're saying, close me. Go ahead. Close me. Shut it down. Lock it in. Let's see. I'm waiting for you to kind of push me over the line, right? And so these are the two things that the buyer is thinking, right? The prospect is thinking. One, they're demonstrating interest. So this is a positive. This is good. Now, this is good. Uh, But the buyer wants you to close them. They're like, because keep in mind, if they got other two other competitors in mind, they're like, why you, right? Help me make that decision. Very tricky, very tricky. Now, here's the problem. I've highlighted the positive. They're interested, they want you to close them. Here's the problem, is that one, as I mentioned, you gave it all to them. You've already talked about everything you needed to talk about. You may have missed something, but let's assume you talked about most of it, right? You know, because you can go back and say, well, Apparently, there's something that's holding you back. What is it? But the problem is that might not be it. There's nothing holding them back. So, and it's almost like going back in the presentation mode again. This is an opportunity to close. When somebody's saying to you is, why should I choose you over there? That's a closing moment, right? And if you say, well, well, maybe we missed something. And then all of a sudden, now you're going to jump back into presentation mode. No, you're there, man. You're there. They're telling you already, I like it. I like what you got. But why you over those people, right? Maybe I'm missing something, right? And then anything you say, this is where you got to be careful. Anything you say is going to be an opinion right now because that's kind of what they're asking. Oh, give me your opinion. Why Why should I choose you over them? Because you've already explained your features, your benefits, your advantage, your gain. You've already explained the objective part, the things that, that are objective, are facts. Now it almost seems like they want your opinion. And this could get very tricky, right? Because if you go, you got to be careful not to overreach. By overreach, is that you can say something like, well, we're just the best in town. We're just that good. Now, again, confidence is good, but overreaching, overconfidence might turn the buyer off. Very tricky, very tricky line. So again, think about that. If you, if you come across as like, well, we're just better. Well, you know, we've been around for 100 years and, you know, we're just better. And for all you know, they've been around for 75, maybe even 100 years. So that's not a selling point. And that's you overreaching and you just got caught, right? So you got to be careful here. This is almost like a trap, but there's a way through it. It's a very easy way through it once you know. So here's the solution. Let's cut to the chase so we can get going here. You don't want to try to convince the person. This is, it's almost counterintuitive, but it's fact. And I think Fonseca said, let's use a takeaway. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. We're going to use a takeaway, but we're also going to use your old school takeaway and we're going to combine it with the challenger sale, take control of the conversation, and then we're going to combine it with giving back control. Here's what I mean. Don't try to convince the person asking because, again, you, if you have to explain still why you, they need to choose you, you're not going to win that argument. If, you ha- if your presentation didn't do it, then something's not going to convince them. Not one line is going to convince them. In other words, you just spend 15 minutes presenting and they say, why you? And you think one line is going to convince them? Maybe not. Now, the second thing is, I want you to take control of that question. Somebody already mentioned it here. I forgot who it was, so I'll give you credit. Just look at the, 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 uh, the stream there. Somebody says, 
take control by asking a question. Take control by asking a question. Now, here comes the hat trick. Here comes the little uh, at the corner. So we got the old school. Let's not try to convince them. Let's do the takeaway. Two, challenge yourself. Let's ask a question. Let's take control of the conversation. Then what you're going to do is you're going to release control. It's going to grab and release. So that's what you're going to do. You're going to hand back control. Here's how you do it. And then you tell me if I'm on it or I'm full of it, okay? And that is, you say something like this. You know, again, the person says, why should we choose you? And you're going to do the takeaway. You know, we may not be the best fit. Now, there's different ways of saying that. We may not be the best fit. We may not be the right company for you. Our solution might not be the right solution for you. You know, we've discussed, now you state fact. We've discussed our solution and how it could help you, right? Stating a fact, we've discussed our solution and how it could help you. Now, here it comes. You mentioned you've met with other vendors. And again, this could be different. Uh, Say, so you mentioned other vendors, or you know they met with other vendors. So you say, you've mentioned you met with other vendors. Uh, sure, you've met with other vendors or looked at our competitors. And then you ask the question, and then you release the control. You say something like this. My question to you is, based on what I've shown you, do you feel that we're the best option? Do you feel we're the best option for you? And then you just shut up. Now, at this point, this person now has to give you an answer. And this is a closing line here. Because what you're saying is, my question to you is, based on what we've shown you, based on the solution we've shown you, do you feel, or some people like to say, do you think that our solution fits what you're looking for, whatever words you want to use. And what's powerful about this is that, first of all, you've shifted the flow of the conversation. Instead of you having to answer the question and try to figure out on the spot what to say, you've turned it around and say, you know, you've seen our solution. We've gone through it. You know, I know you looked at the competitors. My question to you is, based on what I've shown you, based on what we've gone through, do you think we're a good option or a good fit for your company. And now you've taken the responsibility to having to answer that question and shifted it back to them. And now the person has to respond. And what's interesting is that the, the tone or response of that person will pretty much tell you everything you need to know. And what do you think most people would respond with that? If you were to turn it around like that, what do you think they would say? What do you think they would say? Because now they have to think quickly. See, instead of you being on the defensive trying to figure out what to say, now they have to figure out what to say. But the powerful thing here is, is that you've asked a question, but then you've also released control. So you grabbed control of the conversation, and then you boomeranged it back at them. And then said, you tell me if we're a good fit for you. And then you just go, shh. And I think that's powerful, just that line. Again, remember, you've done the presentation. There's nothing else you're going to say at the end. And if this person begins to articulate why they like your company, in other words, because you can be more specific, what did you like based on what I've shown you, what stood out in our presentation that our competitors didn't have? What did you like about our solution that other competitors didn't show you? Whatever it may be. And then now they have to articulate back to you. And they may say something like, well, we like the fact that you do this, we like the fact that you do that. And all of a sudden, what they're doing, because they're verbalizing, they're somewhat selling themselves a little bit. But the point here is, is that instead of trying to explain, that's my bottom line here, instead of trying to explain, trying to figure out, what do I say in that moment? You don't, there's nothing else to say. You made the presentation. Do you think we're a good fit? And based on how they respond to that question, you'll know whether it's going to be or that. You'll know. You'll know. If they say something like, well, I mean, yeah, I mean, it's a good option, uh, you know, and we'll take it into consideration and uh, l let me think about it. At that point, you pretty much lost a deal because they're not giving you, that's not the answer I would expect after a great presentation when I highlight something because that answer tells me they're still looking at the competitors. That's what they're looking at. Now, if they do say, let me think about it, well, you know how we should uh, answer that, right? For those of you who've been following me on this Sales After Dark, by the way, if you don't know how to respond to that, type in Sales After Dark, let me think about it, 
and you know how I go through that process, right? When someone says, let me think about it, it's either because they're not interested or interested but not sure. And then they have to answer that, right? And then you go through that funnel that I've shown you. So that's what I want to highlight today. Just this statement right here of how you basically say, look, we've gone through the solution and we may not be the best fit. You take it away. We may not be the best fit. We've gone through the solution. You've seen our offering. And I know you mentioned competitors based on what we've shown you, based on what I've shown you. What do you think? Do you feel our solution is a good fit for your company or is the ideal fit? Again, play with the words any way you want. All right, so now it's your turn to chime in. Tell me, what'd you think? Hit or miss on this one? Let me know. Let me go up. I know I missed a couple. Let me pop the glasses back on. All right, so if I missed your comment, don't take it personally. Uh, some, sometimes I get too many on the stream here. Uh, let me see. Uh, I'll be back when I get off, so happy for a live. Okay, cool. Uh, because with best, yeah, don't do that. Uh, Victor Brothers, sometimes they say this to get discounts, especially here in India. By the way, I get that. And, I, and, and I've sold internationally, so I just want, I, want, I want to highlight something here, Chandra. I am not naive. I've sold in almost every country. Never been to India. But I sold throughout Latin America, sold in Asia, uh, sold in Africa. So I have some experience international and I understand what you're telling me. I truly understand what you're telling me. But again, if I've positioned my value correctly and, I can, and, and the price differential is within the 5, 10, 15 percent range, I still think I have a good chance of closing them. And yeah, they might do it just to get the discount, but it's how you respond, though. It's how you respond and the conviction you have for your solution that people will sense whether they're going to get a discount or not. And it's amazing how many times I've rejected discounts because I go, no. Yeah, and I don't, by the way, I don't say no. I said, look, I've put my best price on the table. You know, and, and you set that standard from the beginning. I said, we're going to cost a little more. And I've gone through this on my other uh, Sales After Dark where I was selling products in the telecom industry where we were typically about 30% more, if not more, sometimes 40, 55% more, 50% more rather with other products, right? But it mixed on average 30 to 40%, we were higher and we were still closing deals because we knew how to set the value up. So I'm not saying it's easy, but you know what I mean. It can be done, it can be done. Uh, what is preventing you from selecting us over them? Beautiful jewel. Pwah, there it is. I think as a Gerald Buckley used judo. That's a nice, that's a beautiful phrase right there. Capture that one. That's a beautiful, what is preventing you from selecting us over them? And again, all you're doing is taking control of the conversation, asking a great question like that, and then let them answer the question. That is a beautiful question, Brian. Dude, you know what? I'm gonna have to give you this one, man. Just for that one, man. That was that is a good one, man. So yeah, uh, let me. Whoever asks the best questions wins every single time. As I've said, and I didn't make this up, but I learned it from somebody. Average salespeople practice what to say. The best salespeople practice what to ask. So on point, Mark Fonseca, TJ, what do you got to say, man? By the way, Master VA, what about blocking this question slash objection? Ever since I used the value trinity, I never heard of that question anymore. Yeah, I mean, you could use it here. I mean, if, as soon as you use, I don't want to go down that road because I, I'm blocking objections. By the way, if you don't know what he's talking about, go to my Sales Velocity Academy. I got a course called Blocking Objections, which means that I show you how to preempt objections. So by the time you get to the end of the presentation, there isn't an objection. So maybe you missed something you didn't block, TJ, is the answer. So if you missed something, then there it is, right? Uh, yeah, that's some nice sales jujitsu. I like, like. I also like Brian. I'm, I'm going to cop that one. I love that one. What is preventing you from selecting us over them? That is a good one. Stefan, thank you for the feedback, man. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Vera. Appreciate that. Uh, Matt Parker, yes. Frank Vizcatus, what do you got, Matt? I would add, because if you don't, then you shouldn't select us, and we should just shake hands and part friends, right? And, and by the way, there's again, that's like the ultimate walkaway. Let's still be friends. You know, and that's okay. There's no, no, again, I don't have a problem doing that. You got to just be courageous enough to walk away. And let me see, by the way, smoking out the objections, right? And that's what you want to do. Towards the end, if there's still any objections, then they're going to come out. The thing is, and, and Mark's bringing up a good point, kind of tying it back to Brian, is that when you ask that question, 
you're really trying to figure out, are there any other objections? Now, because you, I can say something like this. Uh, well, I mean, because I can, person says, well, why should we choose you over your competitor? I said, well, why wouldn't you? I mean, are there any other objections that you have? And if you ask it like that, it just, it doesn't have the power. It just doesn't have the, you know, the, the meat to, to pull something. But by saying, look, we've shown you our solution, gone through the process. I know you're looking at competitors based on what I've shown you. It's almost like saying, why wouldn't you want to go with us? What's there that's holding you back? Right. But you're giving them the opportunity to answer. So it is smoking out the objections and getting them. There's always something there, man. So uh, what's this one here? Nate, what do you got? I love to sell myself, uh, sell myself in my clothes. I would change the words to based on what I've shown you. Do you feel that I'm the best option for you? Nate, I don't have a problem with that, man. Like I said, this is what I love is that you got to use words that make you feel comfortable. And that right there, I think is also a great line, man. I think I would use that as well. I'm, I would be comfortable using that. So great job, man. Mia Knox says, hit. Thank you, Mia. Appreciate you. Or you're not interested, right? Uh, Rogelio says, uh, he's just saying hi. You Come on, Rogelio. You're, you're jumping in late, man. Uh, let me see. Have you ever, you never build deep relationships selling on price? And that's long term. We know this, man. We know this. We know this. Joshua Brand says, I like it. Oftentimes, us salespeople talk too much. I'm going to try this. We do talk too much. It's, it's, part, you know, it's what makes us great salespeople, but it also hurts us when we talk past the close, right? When it's just there, just shut up and pick up the order type of thing. Saying it with conviction says you believe and trust your service product. Spot on. That's what it is. Uh, I had this conversation today, Shy, with um, uh, I have a customer who's in the, uh, the dental business, right? doing your teeth. And people always come in, Chandra, pay attention. People always come in. They always want discount. They always want a better price. Can you beat this price? Right. And so we dealt with those objections today, you know, and maybe I should do an, uh, another sales after dark just on that. Like, just tell me your price. I don't want to hear anything else. Just give me pricing. Right. And so I walked them through the process and, you know, it was interesting how you can take control of a conversation if you ask the right question. Rogelio gave you the applause, man. And if that's for me, thank you very much. Uh, a couple more. Uh, Master VA, did you watch how I took care of the discount request? It was on the video that I sent you. No, I didn't. I, I got it for some reason when I tried to open the video, I couldn't open it, TJ. Is there any way you can send it in a zip file in Dropbox and then I'll, or Google Drive and I'll, and I'll watch it, okay? And if it's cool, I definitely want to show it on, you know, the sales after dark, man. Uh, that's a real strong close. Take away and summarize your presentation, then drop the question in their lap and just, it's almost like, it's almost like hot potato, right? Clear results, like, eh, it's yours. Answer that question. So you got it, man. Uh, what's holding you back from starting today, right? And again, great question. So again, why should I choose you over your competitors? You can't respond, well, what's holding you back from starting today? They're still trying to get over that hump, GP. Do you know about why am I choosing you? And again, it's because they got two. We've all been in that situation where there are two or three good options. It's just like, ah, oh, I just, you know, I kind of like that one, that one. And what they're hoping is for you to try to convince them. That's what they're looking for. But in this strategy, what you're going to do is because you're doing that whole jujitsu thing, as I think Joshua mentioned or whoever mentioned, I think it was James, is that you're getting them to convince themselves. And again, you might get an objection that was hidden when you do that. Rod Vidre, where you been, man? Where you been? What is after, based on what you've seen so far, would you consider us the best option? What if they say no? Would you ask for feedback to try to rebut or just leave it and work on the presentation? If they say, if someone says, do you feel or do you think we're the best option? And you would just, they say, let's just say, let's just say they're from New York. <laughs> the East Coast, right? Or from Boston. And they go, no, we don't think you're the best choice. First of all, I don't think they would ask you that question if they didn't think you offered real value. They would just thank you. Like, well, thanks for the presentation. Appreciate it. But the fact that they're asking that question to me is a sincere statement that they are interested in that route. So that's, I kind of look at it that way that they're actually saying I am interested. So, but let's just go with your theory that if I ask that question, and they go, no, you know, I don't think you're a right fit. I don't think, right? Uh, because, and then you can ask the question, may I said, may I ask simply why? And, and by the way, there's, simple, there's several ways you can ask that. We've talked about this in past sales after dark. I can ask that question in such a way that it is, that I can lower the defense, as I said. So let's say it's you, Rod, that said no to me. I said, Rod, 
I said, I clearly understand we, we may have missed something in the presentation. Can you tell me, compared to my competitors, why you see us falling short of whatever your metric is? And that person now has to give you. And again, all you can do is maybe when they tell you one or two things, Rod, you'll discover, well, wait a minute, we do that. And maybe you can try to rebut that. Okay, you can try to work that. But the real advantage of that is they're going to tell you why they didn't like you or why they're not choosing you. One advantage is you, you're not going to keep going after a deal that's going to keep leading you on. It ends right there. But second point is I'll grab that information. I'll learn as much as I can on why I lost that deal. And I'll use it in my next presentation because maybe I did miss something. But in this case, what I think is going to happen is that you had a good solution. They're asking that question because they like you. So this, this, this scenario is framed that they like you. They like your solution. They're just having a hard time deciding. And that's real. That's real. Uh, Enterprise SaaS. Oh, man, you guys should get this a lot. Enterprise SaaS. Why should they pay more with the same feature and the same support? If, there, if it's the same features and the same support, I would argue, I mean, by the way, and we could sit here and debate, right? But if, if I don't believe any two products are alike, unless it's like so vanilla, the, the product is so simple. But if it's a SaaS product, I got to believe that there's got to be some small differentiating features or functionalities, or maybe it's ease of use, right? or just something, I would work with my marketing team or even my sales team or my product management team to say, to say, look, every time I go in to get a deal, this is what they tell me. The products are the same, so why are we charging more? The products are exactly the same, same features, and it should be your product managers, right? It should be your marketing people that should help you figure out where are the subtle differentiation points that I can use in my presentation? If they're not giving you that, then they're not doing you any justice as a salesperson because product management should tell you why this is different. For example, two pieces of software can have, because I came from the software space. I've worked as a product manager on software teams and I've worked with developers. And I know for a fact that no two software products are identical. There are some differences if you really dig. But like one difference could be the graphical user interface. One might be better than the other. Two, the other one might have a better customer experience, right? It's easier to use. It could also be less clicks to get to what you want to do, whatever the flow is. Find something. So you're, you're absolutely right. If the customer's perceiving same features, same benefits for the same price, then boom, you're done. And the, you're done. Because then you can talk about how long you've been in business, the company, but maybe there's other things. Like maybe there's infrastructure behind you. By that, I mean your data centers, right? Uh, you got mirror sites, right? So that means if you have, you, there's no single point of failure with your, if the software goes down here, this data center goes down, it's mirrored over here. So there's no interruption of service. Try to find something, work with marketing and product management, engineering to find some things with an S that you can use in your sales pitch, man. Tell them to help you out, man. Uh, what are you expecting from them that I haven't already shown you today? Oh, that's a nice one. What are you expecting from them that I haven't already shown you today? Yeah, I like that, John. I mean, there's something about that phrase. I mean, it's, it's close, brother. It's, I like it. It's close. It's a good one. I think the, the expecting line is throwing me off a little bit. What are you expecting from them that I haven't already shown you today? Right? I got to think on that one. There's something about that phrase. What are you expecting from them? Because it's almost like you're saying, what are they offering that I haven't already shown you? And so if you go down that line, they go, well, you've pretty much shown us the same thing they did. You know, uh, that's a tough one, but it's a good one to think about. You got me thinking about it. That's pretty good. When you, when you can get me to think about it, that's a pretty good question. Uh, I've never seen it phrased that way, which is why I'm going, huh. So I'm going to put that under the... Let me think about it, okay? Great question, man. Thank you for participating. That's a good one, man. That, that, you stumped me, man. Dude, you made me pause, man. So that's good. Uh, salesperson to prospect. I would encourage you to ask why shouldn't you work with us rather than our competitor? Salesperson. I, I would encourage you to ask why shouldn't you work with us rather than our competitor? My, I'm not saying I don't like that line. Uh, it wouldn't fit my style, but it might fit your style because that's a strong one. That's a strong... You know what I mean? Because you're like, like, I would encourage you to ask, why shouldn't you work with us rather than our competitor? What you're saying is, is that 
because what you're you're kind of putting them on the spot. Do you know what I mean? It's and so that's why maybe the other one with the expect one is what's bothering me because you don't want you don't want to trap somebody in the corner from a conversation standpoint. If they feel trapped, they react in very unpredictable ways. So if I said to you, I would encourage you to ask why you shouldn't work with us rather than our competitor. I mean, if I said it like that, it comes off as flippant, right? Like it's like, yeah, you know, you know. You idiot, why not work with us, right? That's kind of kind of what that one sounds like. But I, I get what you're trying to get to. I think for me, it wouldn't work. It, it has too much of an edge to it. It doesn't have the the finesse that I like, the, the one that pulls more. This one, I think, puts them a little bit on the defensive. Let me know what you think. And let me know what others think. What do you think of that line? What do you think of that line? Because uh, it's like, by the way, Miles, thank you, man, because that I, you put some thought into that one, man, and I do appreciate that, man. Uh, thanks so much, Max VA. Responses from the SAD peeps are also informative. Yeah. Hey, man, I, I got some brainiac people on tonight, man. It's like, it's just like, you guys are jamming my board, man. And I love these suggestions, man, because again, I think we need more of this, right? It's like, I like to tell you, I know everything. I know a lot, but it's like when some of you guys give me comments like this, you make me think and rethink my stuff. It goes, can I make it just a little better? So for that, I thank you, man. So thank you for being on there with that. Uh, Candler says, hi, Victor. Great scripts, but don't you think this question is great? Is a great opportunity to find out whom they are comparing uh, with. Oh, Camlish. Why did you go there, man? Why did you go there, brother? Why did you go there? The this this is tricky. This is why it's a great question. Like I said, you guys are on fire tonight, man. You guys are on fire. I gotta take a sip of it's not beer, it's lime water. Uh, so this is a tricky one, Camlesh, because if you bring up the competition, like, first of all, how would you bring it up? Well, who else are you talking to? Maybe I can tell you how good or bad they are, right? You, you open up that can of worms where you, you might come across as, you know, the guy who's going to badmouth the competition. Because no matter who they say, they could say your top two competitors, then what are you going to say? And they may ask you, well, you tell us why we should choose you over that competitor versus that. And they're going to ask you to be specific. Now, you better know their products and their services very good. Because remember, they just saw the presentation. So they know those two and they're comparing you. I think this is a very dangerous line of argument that I would not pursue. I know who my competitors are. My presentation that I just did was meant to beat my competitor. So I don't need to know who they are because I kind of know who they are already. And so I would be very careful with this one. I, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I, would, I don't need to find out. I, the, the only time I would find out, I would go back to what Rod said. If it's a done deal and I lost it, and they said, you know what, we looked the other, I mean, we're going to go with the other com the, another company. Then you can say, may I ask who they are? And then pull that information and get it there and then do the research if you haven't done the research. But... Tough one, Camlich. I don't think I would touch this. I don't like touching, uh, I don't like mentioning competition, kind of my rule, unless the customer does. All right? If the customer says, I've been talking to Camlish Incorporated, which offers, or Camlish Software, which offers a similar software to yours. And so, you know, we want to know why yours is different or how is it different. And I'm going to say something like, look, Camlish software is a great product. And then I can pivot, give them a nice compliment. I said, I want to focus on why ours is more tailored for your business. Notice I just kind of pushed Camlish software to the side. I want to focus on how ours is more personalized and customized for your industry as compared to any other software products out there. Now, notice what I just did. As compared to any other software products out there, which includes Camlish software. So that's how I would handle that. But that's a tough one, Matt. It's a great question, though. Good question. A very good question. Anything to add if the prospect says, you're only the first presenter, there'll be three more, and we'll let you know if we choose you. Okay. Another great question. Dude, you guys are not going to let me get off this, this thing here today. So let me tell you why I love this question, because I've studied this question, and I've studied this scenario, and there's an answer to it. I should almost say this for another pod. I should another sales after dark. In fact, I'm holding this one off. Rod, I'm not answering your question. So what I'm going to do is I'm actually doing a screen capture right now so I can capture that question. 
And I'm gonna probably make that the topic of the next Sales After Dark. Because there's there's two or three different ways to handle this, and I, I just don't wanna go down that rabbit hole and be here all night with you. But that is, great question, man. Dude, giving you that, man. I mean, it's, it's, it's a great question. Right? So thank you. Uh, many, uh, many times about trust, it comes down to relationship. I agree with you, Fonseca, and I'm gonna start wrapping up here. Uh, support is never the same from one company to another. I, I agree with that. You can have the same price, but differentiate on support and quality. I think you're trying to support one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nine, nine's statement, uh, which uh, says, thanks, big dog, man. Thank you, man. But I think you can always find something, right, Chris? You can always find something. But anyway, let me do this, man. Let me do some final thoughts here, man. Again, check out the Sales Velocity Academy and check out the Sales Influence Podcast. Uh, if you're not following my Sales Influence Podcast, the question is why not? But anyway, final thoughts. Now, uh, so what I want to add here, I don't need to go over the scripts. This is a comp You've done your best presentation in this script, in this, in this scenario, and then the customer says, why are you over your competitor? And my, my, my thing is, look, we've left it all on the field. We've said everything we're going to have to say that we needed to say about our product. We're going to turn it around and let the customer answer that question. And so we've had some great suggestions also on the chat. So look at a couple of them. I think uh, Brian had one and oh, who was the other person that had another great one in there. But there were a couple of good ones in there. So go through the chat. Find your style. Find your phrasing. Uh, Camelish mentioned, uh, you know, is an opportunity to go after and find out who the competitors are. I just don't think that's the right moment. That's just my personal opinion. I could be wrong. I'm open to being wrong on that one. Uh, so let me know what you think of the script when you review it. And again, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't subscribed somewhere right there. And hit the like button if you dig this. And then share it with at least one other person. Uh, and let me know what you think of, should I do more scripts? Should I do more tactical stuff on the sales after dark? Do you guys like more tactical stuff or do you like more presentation stuff? Uh, let me know. And as always, I thank you. This is TJ's last comment. Love that. Thank you for your time. And again, uh, we'll be doing episode, what's the next one? 97, getting close. Uh, thank you for your time. Thank you for your eyeballs. And you know I appreciate you being here. So again, sales after dark, Victor Antonio, always reminding you, selling hard when you know how. Take care, guys. See ya.